Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. One I'm very excited about. Today, we are reviewing my Riot New Torrent. Yes, this is mine. And I know some of you who watch this channel a lot are thinking that cannot possibly be yours. That is absolutely not Brian Spec. It is not. I did get the fancy one this time. Uh, I debated and debated and debated about getting one of these. I finally decided to pop for a new torrent, and then I talked to Eugene Kwan has one of these. Great channel, by the way. I linked him down below. LTK, great channel. I'm sure we already all subscribed to him. They both had them in this spec, and they were like, no, they're really pretty in person. Like, they don't look nearly as over the top as they do in photos, and they're 100% right. The, in the photos, this finish looks a lot crazier than it is in person. It looks much more subdued and classy in person. I'm hoping that the video um, shows that. You still catch a little bit of that coppery bronzy, but it's also, if the light's not hitting it, it just looks kind of brown, which is fine. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful knife. If you do want to get it in more brine spec, you absolutely can. More plain spec, you can just get it in a couple different uh, titanium finishes. And uh, you can get it in a couple different blade finishes. This is the pure satin one. The planer versions are 350 this runs $375, so it is not an inexpensive knife. That is absolutely for sure. But I wanted something to have kind of, you know, I like to have one, like, flagship knife around the channel at all times, and I really debated and actually researched before I bought something for once. Normally, um, I buy things, and then I watch the reviews. So, <laughs> but this time I actually watched a lot of reviews, talked to some people, decided I wanted one, and, and I'm very happy with it. Spoiler alert, this is going to be a very positive video. This is a supremely... Awesome, awesome knife, for sure. All right, let's keep moving here. Let's do uh, some uh, some uh, size or specs and size comparison first before we get too much farther. We have an overall length of eight and a half inches. You have a uh, blade length of 3.6 inches, and you have a blade thickness of 0 0.15 inches, so not terribly thick stock. And as you can see, it taper, that's back here. It tapers down pretty quick. And... You have a handle thickness of 0 0.52 inches, so just over that Maginot line that uh, some people demand it has to be under 3.5, and, and a weight of 6.1 ounces, so not light, that's for sure. It's not a total tank, but this is definitely not, not a particularly light knife. And the full titanium versions without these carbon fiber things, according to Riot, weigh the same. I would imagine the carbon takes some off, but maybe these inserts add something back in. I don't know. But they have them all listed as the exact same weight. So let's move on from there. Let's do some size comparisons. I'm going to do quite a few because this is not a knife that you see terribly often. So first of all, comparing it uselessly against another one you don't see terribly often, this is the Riyadh Valhalla. So as you can see, it's about pretty close in length, but it's not as big and bulky as the Valhalla by any means because the Valhalla is just a big, beautiful, crazy thing. Uh, next up, this is one that is not terribly common right now, but I think it will be soon when it's in serial production, the Wii Wasabi. Very similar in overall length to the Wasabi. You're getting almost a, or you're getting a, actually a full four inch blade in the Wasabi, but at least according to my measurements. So now um, let's compare it to some of our more standards. This will be much more useful information. We will do your... Spyderco PM2. You can see it's a little longer than a PM2. And your, let's do the, as I said, I'm going to do quite a few this time because I want to, it's not a terribly common thing. Spyderco Manix 2. Uh, let's do the, this is what I'm going to add to the rotation now because you got a lot of people have these Kershaw Knockout. This is going to be in the regular size comparison rotation again. As you can see, it's a lot thinner than a knockout, but much, much longer. And last but not least, your Benchmade 940. Obviously, it dwarfs a 940 in most conceivable ways, except cutting edge length is actually almost exactly the same. All right, let's move on and talk more about this knife. Um, Aesthetically, as I said before, I think it's beautiful, but now we're getting into more some details about it. It's just, and details is the operative word here. This knife is just the stuff that they've added to this thing. Like, they just went crazy. This is not my first Ria. As I said, I've got the Valhalla, but this is, this is a step above the Valhalla, just in the little 
additions. Obviously, you have this these beautiful little carbon fiber inserts with this cool goldy bronzy insert inside the insert. This really, really nice, this nicely machined pivot. This conical pivot is beautiful, and you have it on both sides. LTK always freaks out about not having that. You have the ceramic ball uh, and this beautiful pocket clip, very well done. Everything is gorgeously chamfered. I don't know why this particular spot strikes me as being pretty. It's just the stupid you know, lock bar insert, but just look at how flush and well done that is. And obviously lockup's great. Yeah, I love the backspacer too with these little divots that are bronzed inside. It's just, uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And the more you look at it, just the more it sticks out. And I love the finish on it where, like I said, if the light's not hitting it, it just looks kind of brown. But when you get some good light on it, you can see the little bit of goldness to it and the very bronziness of it. It's, it's beautiful. It really, truly is. Finish on the blade is also fantastic. It's bi-directional satin, I guess is what I'm going to call it. Not much billboarding. All you have is just the Riot logo over here, which you kind of want, because if you're going to spend money on a Riot, you want people to know it's what it is. And then just the RWO34 on that side. So uh, these nice big thumb studs are well done. All the jimping is just beautiful. Everything on this just is machined to perfection. It is. There are no uh, no reliefs inside to save weight. They're on the outside with, and then filled up with carbon. If I had one tiny aesthetic complaint, I wish they'd have changed from the old torrent. And this is just, I thought, well, since you're changing it, it'd be nice. And this is the tiniest little complaint. I do wish that the lock bar relief was on the inside so that this was just a clean edge. But how's that for nitpicking? That's very much nitpicking. I think it's gorgeous. Quality-wise, beauty, everything. And it's a Riot, so it comes with this awesome new little... Somebody said it's like a teddy bear with the arms and legs and head ripped off. I can't remember who it was who said that. Maybe it was LTK. But this beautiful little bag, you get all kinds of little toys with it. You get a patch, which I think is cool. You get a carry bag and a cloth and some spare parts, too, that are down in here. So that's cool. Like some new, and this is nice to have these new bronze screws because if you mess one up, it's nice to have backups. And then you've got the uh, some washers for the inside. Gorgeous. Uh, presentation and just you get you get toys it's fun all right let's get down to the nitty-gritty some functional stuff about this the most functional part the blade uh, I, I really like the blade on this it is uh, as I said 0 0.15 inches thick at the thickest but as you can see it does taper down a lot um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it it is not terribly thin behind the edge uh, I measured it at like, you know, 29 thousandths back here up to like about 25 thousandths as you're getting through like here. So it kind of tapers a little bit also, just like in the in the back here where that's the thickest part. I mean, I guess it does hold that thickness up pretty far, I guess, but it does taper off fairly quickly, especially in the in the cutting edge. Um, but it, it cuts well. It's it's I don't think this is meant to be like a slicing machine. I'm not going to say that Riot doesn't think people use these much, but let's be honest, people don't use these that much. Um, I fully intend to. I will not buy a knife that I won't use. And yeah, 375 ain't cheap, but it's it's also not it's not a you know $1,200 Shiro or something like that. So uh, I intend to use it, but it does cut pretty well. I do love the blade shape as far as just ergonomically, it works out really well. And I do like this amount of flat that it has in that belly. That's about perfect for me. That that's how I like it. Uh, I did actually have, have used this. I've been carrying it for over a week. I have been actually cutting cardboard and stuff with it, and it works pretty well. And I have to say, it's it's not like I said, it's not mind blowing slicing machine, you know, like one of my Manix twos or my you know Wii rectifier or something like that. No, it's not like that. But it cuts. It, it is a functional tool. It cuts plenty well enough. And it does have a very good tip for piercing and stuff if you're going to be stabbing things with your $375 knife. All right, uh, let's talk about the ergonomics. Ergonomics in this thing are just, mwah, for me, for my hands, again, long, skinny fingers, large hands. Uh, fits me just perfectly. Uh, I can use this forward choil just fine with no issues. This nice harpoon blade gives you a place to move up and rest on for for smaller detail stuff and it's very comfortable in this position at least for my long thumb it is um, none of this 
causes any hot spots or anything like that. I was kind of worried about that that looks really textured. I thought that might be a problem, but it isn't at all. And when you grip onto it, your fingers, at least my fingers, rest right on that stuff that's a little bit grippy. So that's nice. It gives you a bit of purchase. I will say this jimping up here is, it, that's, it's kind of, as I say, ornamental. It doesn't do much. I mean, uh, my fingers slide right over it. Uh, but no hot spots from the clip at all. Can't feel it a bit no matter which way you grab it it's just uh it's really good ergonomically it's it's an excellent excellent knife ergonomically quite happy with it uh as far as the carry um yeah it's not a light knife by any means uh, as i said 6.1 ounces it doesn't carry particularly deeply but it carries deep enough and what sticks out is gorgeous so i'm fine with that but uh, <laughs> yeah it's like got a you got about this much sticking out from your jeans and it, it's not I, of course, I always wish for something to be completely discreet, but I don't know. If you're buying something with all this fancy bronze and stuff on it, do you want it to be completely discreet? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do want people to see it. So can't really complain about that. It is easy to get your hand by. I will say the pocket clip is angled very well. The flipper tab is big and beefy, but it's not something that jabs out into stuff too much the way this is angled. And it's not. it's got some jimping on it, but there's no real sharp edges to catch your fingers or anything as it slides by or to really tear up your stuff. So I think if for for its size, it carries very well. I mean, it's not a Benchmade 940 or anything, but it carries pretty well for its size. So no real complaints there. The action on this thing is definitely its party piece other than its looks. Oh, it's so good. This is completely out of the box, carried for a week. I've never torn it apart. It, um, it's This is how it came. It's just, listen to that sound. That's pretty great, and it, it's just, it makes such a great noise, and it just falls right shut. No shake, no nothing. Just a little turn and bang, and it's closed. Out of the box like that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If you watch my unboxing video of this, you'll see it was like this as soon as I took it out. I just love it. It does have thumb studs also. The thumb studs do act as a stop, um, so that's... That's another thing that people complain about the new torrent, like one little thing. If you want to make tiny little complaints, yes, these thumb studs act as a stop, so and they do contact the frame both here and here. So you do get, especially, you're not going to notice this if you don't get one of the anodized versions, but, and you can see it there. I hope the camera's picking it up. Yeah, you do get these little lines where that contacts, that the anodization goes away. Um, I was holding the lock bar there, I couldn't thumb set it. Yeah, so you can see you get these little lines. Doesn't bother me much, but if that's something that's gonna bother you, then know that. The thumb studs are functional, and for some reason when you use a thumb stud, it makes an even more satisfying noise. I don't know why that is, but it makes an even more satisfying clank. We're doing acoustic size sound comparisons now. Yeah, so you don't know, it just makes more of a thwack when you use the thumb studs, but Oh, I love the action on this thing. I can play with it all day, and I often do. It's uh, just, it's so much fun to handle. So, what is my conclusion on this thing? Yep, I love it. I'm very, it was a big, big leap for me to get something like this. I haven't had something this expensive in a while, and uh, not since I got rid of my um, uh, Chris Reeve. So, it was, I'm very glad I did, and I think you would be too if you got one. Uh, I'm becoming a huge Riot fan, which is dangerous. I have two of them now, and it's a dangerous, dangerous slope to slide down. But Riot makes some awesome quality stuff. One of my favorite companies right now. They have some amazing new stuff coming. The Jack Integral. I'll probably try and get me one of those. Uh, just a great company. Good quality stuff. You get all these nice little toys. And this, the new Torrent is just fantastic. The old Torrent was super popular for a reason and now they've just improved it so good on them unless you don't think the Arduino 34 if you think that's a downgrade that's up to you but uh at 375 i don't think it's that bad for all the quality you get and that and it's a it's a good steal and you know what it, like i said it's it's plenty good enough and it's unique and i kind of like that about it that there's not many knives in rwl 34 so i kind of like it but that's up to you but other than that, I can't see how anyone would have any reason to complain about this knife. I just think it's fantastic. It's just a beautiful, gorgeous thing. The action is superbly great. The blade is totally functional and good. 
uh, ergonomics are good. It's it's amazing. Definitely one of my favorites I've ever reviewed. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.